Welcome everyone to the fourth webinar in our series of short Learn on Enterprise and Learn on Cloud webinars. My name is Anders Nilsson and I'm the Technical Solutions Consultant for Learn on Cloud and Learn on Enterprise on SaaS. And we are in today's webinar going to look at how Learn on Cloud can be part of a DevOps tool chain. As always, Learn on Cloud is a tool under constant development. It is of course developed in a DevOps and Agile environment as well. And as such, the product management would like to hear any ideas for improvement from our users. So if you do have an ID or an enhancement request for Learn on Cloud, please make sure to use the uh, ID exchange and the product management team for Learn on Cloud will then take those ideas into consideration. I assume that most people here on the call here today have a quite a good handle on what DevOps is, but to give a quick overview, it's about trying to combine software development with IT operations and QA with the intended aim of uh, simply shortening the development life cycle. But it's also about using or combining practices and tools that increase the speed of the ability to deliver applications or services. And together with shift left testing, that will then hopefully enable us to catch any issues a, a lot earlier in the development life cycle. And as you know, this is the classic one, that the earlier an issue is found in the development lifecycle, the cheaper it is to fix it. And the later it's found, it will be, of course, be exponentially more expensive to sort out. If we look at the typical DevOps pipeline, we are looking at a number of automated processes and tools aiming to let software developers and operational people to work together on building and deploying code into production. The main reason for building such a pipeline is simply to, again, speed up the ability to deliver applications. A well thought through automated DevOps pipeline can shrink the cycle time from weeks down to hours, actually, and at the same time build in a number of automated tests and release gates that will make sure that the code that is being deployed is working as expected. So if we look at some of those DevOps tools, there are a number of tools that handle version control or source code management. And among those, Git is one of the larger ones and also one that we can integrate with Learner Cloud. So more on that later on. When it comes to building and integrating the application, again, there are a number of tools available. We have Jenkins, Bamboo and Azure DevOps. And they are some of the more popular ones and they are all supported by Learner Cloud as well. So again, a little bit more on that later on. For the unit testing, if you are using Selenium scripts, which are using the JUnit testing framework, then you can run those scripts within LRC as well. And of course, where Lona Cloud really shines is with the uh, performance testing, where we can run not only most of the protocols from the UGN, but also third-party scripts like JMeter and Gatling. So as we can see, there are a number of ways where we can see the benefits of integrating and making Learn and Cloud part of the DevOps pipeline. As I mentioned previously, the earlier we start testing in the development lifecycle, the cheaper it is to fix any issues. And where it's earlier to start than with the developer themselves in their own IDE of choice. The same person or team that writes the code can also then write performance tests to test the application that they are working on, and then also launch those tests without having to leave their IDE. As an example, I've here integrated the Microsoft Visual Studio Code IDE with Learn Developer, which is a tool for web protocol performance testing, and it focuses on the HTTP transport and the WebSocket level. And Learn Developer is a free tool that enables you to run what's called Dev Web Protocol Scripts, which is using a JavaScript SDK. And it's lightweight, scalable, and it's even cross-platform, so you can drop it into most of the popular IDEs out there. So again, I'm using it in MS Code here, and if I would be a developer working on server-side web components, I can then in the same IDE also put together one or multiple performance tests that would run against my application. So I can set up or define my scenario here, uh, defining how many better users I would like to run and the load profile for those. If I'm using parameters, I can use this as I would do in uh, the UGN. And I can even adjust the runtime settings as required. 
uh, in by doing that in the IDE as well. But all of this is, of course, to enable me to run my test from inside the IDE here. So to, to run a test, it's a simple task of the clicking run load in the menu. And the scripts will then run and report the back results to me, and all without leaving the IDE. Although doing so will then initially only make use of the load on developer, which works fine for smaller tests but it only supports testing with up to 50 voter users. So to get some heavier load going, you can also run tests using an integration called ScaleRD, which then integrates with Lonel Cloud and allows you to scale up and run larger tests using your Lonel Cloud license. So to do so, we simply add our Lonel Cloud details to a YML file which contains the configuration, and this is also where we then can define our scenario to run. We then select to run our test using Lonel Cloud. And if we then go and check in Lonel Cloud, which well, of course is, isn't necessary, but doing so, we can then see that our test is automatically created and started. And once finished, we again get the results reported back to us inside the IDE. But you can, of course, also check the results in Learn Cloud as usual if you would like to do a more proper analysis there, as you would with any normal performance test. So again, it it would be hard to start testing earlier <laughs> in the lifecycle than by by the developer themselves in their own IDE of choice. And while we're on the subject of developers, there is a lot chance that they will be using Git as a version control system for their code. So that can then also be used for your test scripts as well, which then adds the security of the being able to track any changes done to the test scripts and that the latest version of it is also being used for your performance testing. And there are a number of version control systems on the market, and one of the most popular ones is then Git, which is free and open source, and it comes with the benefit that it can be integrated with Lonel Cloud. And if we look at the most basic level of integration, which is the synchronization of a script between the online repository and the cloud, then this can be done both manually, requiring you to click a sync button in the cloud, or it can be done automatically where a script is synced whenever a new version of it is pushed onto Git. And if we look at what's needed for this outside of Lunar Cloud, we, we need first to, of course, create a repository on GitHub, which I here then named uh, LRC Scripts. We then have to download and install Git locally on, the, uh, on our laptop. Then through the Git client, we create a local repository in a folder on our laptop. And then either copy or create a Vuegen script in that directory or, or, or a repository. And some of you might know that Vuegen also has its own Git integration, but even though I'm using Vuegen here, this solution I'm showing here works for any scripting tool that might you, might, you might be using out there. So finally, we go through the Git commands to push the script onto GitHub, and I'm also adding a comment, uh, a commit comment here about well, how committed we are to this. If we then check what's needed on the Lonel Cloud side, we first need to download the uh, Git agent from Lonel Cloud, and that is available in the Get Tools widget on the dashboard. We just install it and we configure it with our Lonel Cloud details, and we then point it at the GitHub repository that we created earlier, and we are then using the public URL for that. And then finally, we start the Git agent on the, on the laptop. And it will then show up in Learner Cloud under the assets and then under agents. And if all was configured correctly, it will then show up as connected and, and it will also display which repository it is connected to. So then to get our scripts that are located in the GitHub repository to be available to us in Learner Cloud, we then go into assets and scripts and select to upload from Git. We get a list of the available scripts in that repository and we can select our scripts and if wanted, we can also check the auto-synchronization uh, auto box. The script will then be added from Git into Lonel Cloud 
And I also added a label here to simply highlight that this script is indeed synced from Git. When you do have a script available to you in Lunar Cloud, you might, be want, you might want to be able to check that this is indeed the latest version available, and that can be done through checking the commit history link for this selected script. And that will then show the commit history from GitHub in Neural Cloud. And you can then verify that the script in Neural Cloud is then indeed the latest committed version on GitHub. So let's look at how this then works in practice, where we, for example, comment out a line in Vuegen. And let's say we remove the WebRef find row displayed here. This is then, of course, the script that is part of the local Git repository. So I can then compile the script and then push that change onto GitHub using the local Git tool, where the change will then also be highlighted. I also added a commit message, just saying that I added a comment and once committed, this is then also available or visible on GitHub. Now, since I ticked the auto synchronization box when I added the script to Lonely Cloud, that then means that if I wait a minute or two while the Git agent pulls GitHub, and this is also then visible in the git agent output window. And we can see that when the change is detected and the script is then synced from GitHub to Lonely Cloud. We can also check the commit history in Lonely Cloud itself if we want, just to see our added comment comment there. And if I view the script in Lonely Cloud now, that will also of course show that the commented out text row is now indeed commented out. So again, not only will using Git add the benefits of having a version control system for your scripts, um, the integration with Lunar Cloud will also automatically make sure that the latest version of the scripts are the ones that are used when you are running your performance tests in Lunar Cloud. Some of the more common tools in a DevOps chain are the CI or continuous integration tools. And there are a number of plugins for those to provide a mechanism for executing load tests as part of a build script. Jenkins is a common CI or build server, which means that as soon as someone checks in code and triggers a new build of the application that's under, de that's under development, then the Jenkins server then builds and integrates the code and makes sure that it works and that there are no integration issues. Lonely Cloud also supports integrations with other CI tools such as Bamboo or Azure DevOps. And for all of them, the integration with Lonely Cloud means that as part of the build cycle, we can make sure that a performance test is automatically executed. That will run and test the newly built application, making sure that there are no performance degradation issues. If we look at what's required for this integration to work, I'll be using the Jenkins plugin as an example, but it works in a similar way with Bamboo or any of the other available CI plugins. The Jenkins plugin is downloaded from the either the Get Tool widget on the LLC dashboard or from a link in the ADM Help Center. The plugin is then uploaded to Jenkins on the Advanced tab in the Manage Jenkins section. And once Jenkins has been restarted, the LRC, the LRC plugin is then available to us. In the Jenkins configuration, we provide our details for Lunar Cloud, and we have the options here to either use normal username and password credentials, or we can also use a token that we created in Lunar Cloud and enter the client ID and the secret. Since uh, Jenkins is a build server, there will be a number of builds uh, that are in use. So to add a uh, Lunar Cloud performance test to a specific build, we just add a build step and we then define which specific existing load test in Lunar Cloud should be executed whenever this build is triggered. Then, whenever our build is indeed triggered, our selected performance test will then be part of that build cycle. And if observed, we can see that the selected test uh, to automatically start running in Lunar Cloud. And that will, of course, enable us to check the progress of the load test in Lunar Cloud. We can check the graphs and we can check the status, but that is not required and uh, will most often not be done either, since this is all part of the automated pipeline. And once the test has finished, and since this is often automated, 
There are a number of ways to get the numerical details of the results of a test, either as an XML file or as a CSV file, which are then located on the Jenkins server. But of course, you can also access the dashboard and the report for the test directly in the Cloud if you would like to do some further analysis in there. But if this is then part of an automated pipeline, the test results will then be read by the tools involved, and if all is okay, the pipeline will continue, perhaps onto deploying the code to staging or to production. But if it doesn't pass the test, then the pipeline will stop and a report will be sent down the line to whomever introduced the change that caused the test to fail its requirements. So if you do have a CI server in your DevOps pipeline, which is highly likely, then you can often integrate that with Lunar Cloud to get that automated testing going. And also while talking about pipelines, for those of you out there who are using Octane, then Lunar Cloud can be added to the pipelines or the Octane pipelines in there as well. I've provided a number of solutions here today that integrate with Lunar Cloud out of the box, but for anyone who would like to use an integration that is not yet supported, then it's highly possible that this can still be integrated by using the Lunar Cloud public API which provides REST API access to most of the functionalities in the Cloud. This can also be useful when there is, for example, an existing solution, but that you want, you then want to access results from an executed test by another plugin or from another system. There are, of course, a number of ways to make use of the public API. You can use common tools like Postman or any similar scripting tools for REST API but it will often all come down to personal preference. And as an example, we can uh, see here how we can even use VUGN to log in and run a performance test in the cloud for us, and also then get the results back from a test run in the logs of VUGN. But again, this is just a simple example, and using VUGN would probably not be the best tool of uh, choice for such solutions. But again, uh, if you do have a need for a custom solution, uh, have a look at the public API and you will most likely be able to write up your own solution for your needs. Now to wrap it up here a bit, coming to the end of this webinar. As we've seen, Lonar Cloud can be integrated into the DevOps chain in many ways, from working in your IDE and running tests in there using Lonar Cloud and ScaleRD, or using Git as the source code management tool and using that to automatically sync your test scripts with Lono Cloud, making sure that the latest version of the scripts are always used, that when we building an integration and a new version of your code, we can add an automatic load test of that code into the build cycle and use that as a gatekeeper if the deployment should continue or not. And finally also, that if there are any integrations needed, but there aren't any ready-made solutions yet, we might then be able to use the public API to create our own custom solutions. So with that, I would like to thank you for your time here today, and I hope that you found this webinar of use for you. So thank you very much, and see you next time. Yeah.